It seems pretty lively over there. What's the occasion? There's supposed to be some kind of cooking contest. Maybe they're preparing for it. Uh -huh. Someone say cooking contest? You think they'd let me participate? Huh? I didn't know you cooked lambs. Me? Nah. I'm all about the eating. Think of all that grub! Oh, maybe I should join too. Hey there, folks. Travis, Monica, we just heard about this cooking contest. Yeah, it's kind of a tradition around here. You know how the world is. Can't set fuss outside without putting yourself in danger. People are going stir-crazy, all shut up with nowhere to go. They need a bit of light entertainment to diffuse some of that stress. So these contests are kind of a regular thing. This seems like the perfect opportunity for you to join in. To sample the food? Ah, I'm afraid the judges are selected by majority vote. They've already been decided well in advance. That said, the winning dishes do get shared among the audience. So you'd like us to join as chefs? Yes! Count Manana in! Manana been champing at me for cookery action! <laughs> yeah, this event's pretty much made for Manana. Word! C could I... Could I join as well? I like your spirit. You're both very welcome. Looks like you'll have your work cut out for you, eh, boss? You said it, Travis. I'll let you prepare the lucky spice. Oh, crap. Not that stuff. There are no binding rules, no themes to follow. You're free to make whatever you like. But you are expected to bring your own ingredients. Once you have them, take them to Michiba at her canteen. She'll hold on to them for you. Hearing loud and clear. I'll see you at the contest, then. Looking forward to it. Manana, not pull punches! We rivals now, Miss Miyabi. Yes, let's do this. Since when did you learn to cook, Miyabi? You never told me. <laughs> I've only dabbled, really. Right. we better go out looking for our ingredients, eh? Hold on. We haven't even decided what we're going to make yet. Ah, just testing it. Before we decide, maybe we should ask around the city first. See what kind of foods they like. Their favourite seasonings. That should give us enough to make a start on. True. We need some kind of direction to start with before we can think about making anything. Something in your mind, Mia. I was just thinking, it's unusual for Miyabi to voice her interest in something like this. Before, she'd always tried to avoid anything that involved competition. So this is kind of a surprise. Huh, I see. Well, all the more reason for us to cheer her on. Yeah. Miyabi, you're with your friends today. Yes. Sorry if we're bothering you. Not at all. Not at all. Always nice to see you. So what brings you here? Actually, I've decided to enter the cooking contest. Oh, really? I'd like it if you came. I'm going to try as hard as I can. Sweetie, I would love to. I'll be cheering you on all the way. There's... One other thing. I have a request, if it's not too much trouble. Tell me, anything I can do to help? Would you mind sharing some of your Soy Primo sauce? Your homemade recipe? My sauce is going to feature. This just keeps getting better and better. Please, take as much as you need. I'm sure it'll be enough, but if by any chance you run out, just swing by again. 
Romero absolutely loves that sauce. I've got jars full of the stuff. Thank you so much. <laughs> You're getting awfully worked up about all this. Just relax and enjoy the experience. Yes, Mum. Oh. <laughs> now, what did I just say? <laughs> Great. That should be the last of me Abby's ingredients. Yes, I think so. Thank you. Now for bananas. Hmm. What was on the list again? Was mottled marble Aries meat? Killjoy crusted meat? Cozy Rogel egg gems and Lucky Marin thick cuts. Might be a bit tricksy for friends, but Manana have confidence. That's all of the ingredients for the both of them. Tippy toppy job! Got everything you need now? Then I think it's about time to start the contest. Is everyone ready? Looks like both the chefs and the judges are ready. Well, ladies and gents, it's time to start another annual cook-off. And who else to narrate the events as they unfold but the city's number one charmer? Just kidding, it's me, Travis, your ever-affable lost numbers lieutenant. Let's start by introducing our expert panel of judges. The lucky four adjudicators for this year's incredible turnout are... Drum roll, please. Gondor! You've been begging to be a judge for ages now. Looks like it's your lucky day. Oi! Don't you bloody patronise me. You'll be laughing on the other side of your face if you're not careful. Ahem, <clears throat> moving swiftly on. You fancy yourself an avid foodie? Well, let's see how you measure up to the wise and erudite well well. Next up, a lover of music and all things lyrical, it's Mr. Boomer. He's got a refined palate for music and food, and I'm sure he's about to give us a piece of his mind. Last but not least, we have our youngest judge on record. Introducing San. Far as I can tell, he just played and enjoys food. He'll eat whatever you can throw at him. <laughs> yeah. Give me all your food. We want you four to judge the meals on their own merits as honestly as possible. Now, let's introduce our chefs. First up's our Lost Numbers ace cook, Nisik. So, how are you feeling? Think you've got the potential to be numero uno? <laughs> Watch it, you. No intimidating the judges. You're gonna scare the kid. You wanna settle the score? You do it with food. Calm and peaceful-like. Next up, it's our very own boss. Or should that be Elder? Uh, oh, uh, let's just say uh, Madam Monica. Just stick to the usual. Who's next? All right, boss it is. Next, we have Uro Boris's very own queen of cuisine, Manana. Manana ready to steal away hearts and stomachs of all. And whispers on the grapevine tell me our last contestant is a rising star. She's everyone's sweetheart, Miss Miyabi. You go, girl. <gasps> And those are our four entrants for today. Shall we get started? Then, Nisik, if you'd like to reveal the meal. Feast your eyes on this. So cool. Well, well, well. Applying heat cause emergence of emerald green undertones. Shell gradually 
burns loose as it shine with beryl glaze. Behold, the jade lobster! Is this thing edible? Pretty tasty and juicy. Mm. Contrary to expectation, taste pop and lock inside mouth. Big bang of umami fill entire taste buds. Hey, how are you supposed to eat this? I don't get it. Maybe Nisik would be kind enough to assist. I beg your pardon? Let's check in with our next culinary combatant. It's our very own boss. <laughs> I'll find a chink in your armour. My dish is the Monicurry Special. Oh, come on! got tasty sausages in it. Well, well, well. Well, well only heard rumours, but Monicurry said to be legendary meal among lost numbers. I'll have me some of that. Oh, damn you, bitch queen. You got the spiciness spot on. <gasps> These vegetables, flavour normally distinctive yet subtly veiled here, and spiciness perfectly compensate. But despite this, single plate appear positively heaped with nutrition. Is dish spice renowned or something deeper? Ah, it's making my tongue all prickly. <laughs> Oops, guess the kids' taste buds weren't quite prepared for that just yet. <laughs> Funny. Everyone normally loves the stuff. Did I hear too much Lucky Spice? I'm sure your bellies are gradually getting rounder, but there's plenty more where that came from. The next contender is... Manana! Finally! Time for big moment! Delicious dish of Manana is... Secret recipe of Nopon, passed down in greatest of stealthy, or rather, little spin on traditional version. Doodle noodles, banana style. Prepare for taste beyond taste. That looks yummy. This is gonna be awesome. Wow, that's gonna be a banger. Tears of well well might form small pools. To think Nopon exist that could recreate recipe of legend. Oh. Give me more of this meat! More! More! Well, well, never dream of chance to eat perfect doodle noodles in lifetime. Taste is beyond compare. Such level of extravagant. Well, well, good, well, rocket into skies above. How the crap is this so good? I don't know what to say. Oh, the competition's fierce, but we've got one more dish lined up for you all. Take it away, Miyabi. Okay. Here's the meal I'll be presenting today. Oh. Ah, oh, it doesn't look very special. I guess when you put it alongside the others, yeah. But it clearly made with love. Preparation of dish reflect nature of chef, and this, no exception. Ah, oh, it feels 
Pickles. Hash not pudding. Comforting. Mm, so understated, yet so palatable. Hard to express in words. Like warmth filling entire body. I eat this fish all the time, but I don't think it's ever been this tasty before. Gosh, I wonder how she prepared it. I'd love to know. Same. Where do we go and ask her once the contest's over? May, you have the best ideas. Now that looks scrumptious. They look like they're loving the soy primo sauce too. Now, I hate to break it to you folks, but it's time for the judges to make their decision. Which of these four outstanding meals has satisfied their stomachs? I'm sure you're all on the edge of your seats. The winner of this year's cooking contest is... Congratulations, Manana. <laughs> Feels good at top. Better luck next time, Yabby. Thanks, everyone. You all helped me so much. I didn't make first place, but I'm glad everyone got the chance to try my food. Manana was kind enough to raise the idea. Thank you, Manana. Aw, not to mention. It would be a terrible shame for friends to miss out on delicious nom-noms of Miyabi. Nissik looks in a right mood. I can hear you. Can't let him get away with this, though, can we? We'll lend you a hand next time. Hmm. How'd you like the morning curry, Gondor? you always make it. The name's dumb, though. Can you come up with something better? You say that every time. I don't see the problem, personally. I actually kind of like it. I'm not asking your opinion. I'm saying it's freaking embarrassing. I've still got some left, by the way. You want a bowl or not? Don't change the subject. And of course I want a bowl. was so much fun. Maximum agree. Plus was big learning experience. I can see my Nana need to greatly expand repertoire. Ah. If that's your plan, would you mind teaching me some more about cooking? Nana? Even though Miyabi already plenty good at cooking. Oh, I'm honoured that you'd say so. But I really don't have a lot of experience. I'd love it if you could teach me some more. Ah! Oh, then let Manana pick up what Miyabi putting down. Miyabi asking to become apprentice of Manana? That's right. If it's not a problem. No problem! Manana, welcome with open wings! Oh, that's wonderful! Thank you, Manana. Ah! Before Manana forget. I should snaffle up recipes of Monica and Nisik while still have chance. Oh, good idea. Let's do that. Hey, Miyabi. You did great there. 
Your food was amazing. Yeah. I said before that I did this for the city. Of course, they were the highest priority in my mind. But really, it was for the both of you. I so wanted you to try it. It was for us? This world, it's filled with nothing but tragedy and hardship for us. But now, after coming here, that feels like a distant dream. Yeah, that's right. You've always kept my wishes in your heart, haven't you? That's why you brought me here, right? Because we're alive. We get to see these sights. Thank you. <sighs> no, Miyabi. Thank you.
I suppose you must have gotten used to your life here now, huh, Sagiri? Affirmative. Adaptation to environment is proceeding favorably. Still can't believe this is your new home. I'll be honest, I had my doubts. But hey, looks like you made it work. If there's anything you need or want, don't be afraid to ask us, okay? Actually, may I make 
one request. Of course. What is it? Senna, you're... Uh-huh. My what? You're Onigiri. I, uh... I'd like to... For everyone in the colony. Oh! Now that you mention it, I remember you talked about it before. Before we came here, we suffered much hardship. At least... I thought it would be optimal to reward them with something. Right, of course. That sounds like a great idea. But are you sure you want the onigiri? There are lots of foods that are much nicer. I want your onigiri, Senna. <laughs> would you look at that, Senna? Looks like your cooking's found a fan. <laughs> well, if you insist that strongly, I'll have to put my best foot forward. So, it sounds like we'll need quite a lot of Mithrice this time. Yeah, if we want to make enough for everyone, we'll have to ask Colony Lambda to share again. Sigiri volunteering for support. Pharon manipulators should be capable of forming the Onigiri. Oh, uh, thanks, Sigiri. That'll be handy. <laughs> Number seven, are you departing? Affirmative. Is something the matter, number six? Apologies, but could we talk in private? I have an urgent report to make. Senna, will you permit it? Sure, no problem. Don't mind us, we'll be waiting just over there. Understood. I will rejoin you once I have received the report. Now then, number six, please present your report. Before I do, I would like to verify my assumptions first. The number of remaining Ferrons in Colony Zero is a total of seven. And the Ferron ignition circuit is secured with an iris recognition lock, meaning that none, save us, are authorized to pilot them. Therefore, the use by Kevis and Agnes is fundamentally impossible. Correct? Affirmative. No errors detected in preceding statements. <sighs> Number six? Number seven, I ask for your calm. While reconnoitering in the Faunus region, I confirm the existence of an eighth unit. <gasps> Unexpected. The identification number was for... Unit number 13. Are you certain? Does this suggest she is alive? I have no evidence. The signal disappeared quickly. I could find no other leads. I have informed nobody of this incident so far. I didn't wish to cause undue agitation. However, I decided that you should be appraised of the situation, number seven. I, uh, uh, I know it's been on your mind ever since she disappeared. Thank you. This concludes the report. Looking forward to this onigiri. Or what have you. Hey, Sagiri. All done? Affirmative. Unit number seven is ready to depart on command. <laughs> Someone sounds eager. Well then, shall we hit the road? If she is indeed alive, I should have felt the connection. But at this moment, I feel nothing. Is it... is it really you? Number 13? Right, so, bit of a dead end with the Mithrice. What do we do now, Senna? Hmm, yeah, that's one thing, but... Sana? Hmm? Huh? Something wrong, Sigir? Perhaps it is advisable to put the search for Mithrice on hold and focus our efforts on these attack incidents. Huh? I am inferring from past behavior patterns. This course of action is congruent with your actions I observed up to this point. Ah. <laughs> 
sounds like she's got you clocked, love. Doubt you can get out of this one, even if you wanted, which you probably don't. <laughs> yeah, you're right. Sagiri's got it in one. Let's capture the crooks that attack the transports and get back the stolen Mithrice. Compliance. All right. Now that that's decided, where should we begin? We ought to talk to the logistics chief that our contact mentioned. They may know more about the assailants. Hey, excuse me. Can we talk to you for a minute? Hmm? Ah, oh, yeah, sure thing. What can I... Ah! What? Why is that inside the colony? How did it infiltrate us? Hey, hang on. What's gotten into you? Don't act dumb. That's the lead mist that attacked us, isn't it? What? Wait, what are you saying? You think the person who attacked the transport was... <gasps> no, you got it all wrong. We haven't done anything, and Sagiri's been... Senna, breathe. But, but this guy's... <sighs> so just to confirm, the Levness, or whatever it is you saw, are you certain it was the same as this machine? What? I just told you, didn't... Hmm. No, hang on. Now that I look closely, maybe it's not quite the same. Oh, and anyway, aren't you Commander Izzard's friends? Yes. Yes, we are. Have you calmed down now? Can we talk peacefully? I... I'm terribly sorry. It's just this levness. It freaked me out. We are investigating this matter. For the benefit of ascertaining the culprit, we request information sharing. In that case, you should speak to Sergeant Tonya. She's been assigned to the investigation. If you're willing to lend us a hand, she should be your first port of call. I imagine she'll have gotten some information by now. I hope it'll prove useful to you. Hey, say now. What the spark is going on here? <gasps> Don't worry, Sigiri. We all trust you. You said it. It can't have been the others from Colony Zero either, I'm sure. If we are to ascertain the truth, I believe that all possibilities must be considered. In other words, we don't know enough yet to conclude that the culprit was a pharaoh, right? Indeed. That's right. We'll get to the bottom of this. Yes, we will. We must. Is it coincidence? Or is it... her? The logistics chief told me you were coming. You wanted to talk about the attacker? Whippy said you might have some clue. I'll be honest, we don't really know anything about that Levness's whereabouts yet. However, it seems that there may have been a similar incident involving goods stolen by a Levness at Colony 4. Your guess is that the perpetrator of the Colony 4 attack was the same person who was responsible here? Yeah, I think they might be. Really, though? That's a long way to go. If nothing is done, other colonies may also suffer losses to goods and material. I was hoping you guys would be able to visit Colony 4 and investigate matters on the ground. Why us? What's wrong with you lot handling it? If we Agnians did anything like that publicly, we would arouse lots of suspicion. Especially immediately after getting raided. Yeah, exactly. It would be hard for us to investigate any further. But also, since I hear you guys are all buddy-buddy with the Colony 4 folks... Yes, I see your point. Guess we're in the best position to take this on. All right. We'll take a look. Before we depart, I request a quick confirmation. The Levness that attacked the transport, was it similar to this unit? Um, if I remember correctly, I think they could be the same model. Understood. Thank you for your cooperation. It seems we could conclude that the perpetrator of the attack on the transport was a Pharon after all. Tyon, mate, pal, you always know exactly what to say. Just stating the facts. Regardless, no matter if it's a Pharon or an as yet unknown Levness model, the real problem lies elsewhere. What's important is who was piloting it. Number 13. Uh, are we gonna like this? I have information to offer. 
probability is high that the objective is a Pharon. Assuming that is correct, I believe I may have knowledge of the Operator's identity. Whoa, really? But all the folks from Colony Zero were accounted for. Several years ago, a soldier went missing in action after an accident during a mission. That was number 13, the Operator of Pharon Unit number 13. I see. At the time, neither the Husk nor the Pharon were recovered, leading to number 13 being declared killed in the line of duty. But you're saying it's possible she's still alive somewhere today. Is that it? If number 13 got separated from her comrades, no wonder she'd be pushed to steal supplies in order to survive. I have no proof for the conjecture. However, if number 13 truly is alive, then this time around, I will be sure to... Sagiri, have you been worrying about this ever since we talked to Whitby? <sighs> All right. It looks like we've got one more objective to add to the list. Righto, to bring number 13 back to safety. Sound about right, Sagiri? Yes, Senna. All right then. Time to head to Colony 4 and look for clues, just like Tonya said. Ah, you guys. Hi there. Uh, could you keep it brief? I'm kind of snowed under. Then we'll get right to it. Someone hit one of your transports, yeah? What? Where'd you hear that? Oh, whatever. At least it will be quick. Remember before, when a secret messenger we sent to our allies got attacked? The same levness from that time showed up again, only this time it went after... Well, you already know. Do you have anything that might help us track them? Oh, you guys are tracking them too? Yeah, for a few reasons. You want to let us handle your side of it as well? Sure, since you ask so nicely. Cheers, Maxie. We owe you. And sorry for the hassle. Nah, don't mention it. This isn't the time for personal feelings. Best focus on resolving the matter at hand. According to my info, the attack took place around the border between here and the Danar Desert. If you search every nook and cranny thereabouts, you might find something. Understood. Then we'll have to go do just that. I'm sure it goes without saying, but I'll say it anyway. Be real sparking careful. Oh, and good luck. There are crucial parts missing. Perhaps someone was trying to repurpose them. More importantly, there's nothing else here. Did we come here for nothing? Evidence of Pharon activity detected. Huh? What? Where? Visual sensors have detected residual flame clock energy. Its signature is unique to mobile armored units utilizing a flame clock for propulsion. Wow, you can find stuff like that. Nifty. The trail leads in the direction of the desert. Pursuit is currently possible and advised. Then let's go after them, Sagiri. Compliance. A door? What's it doing in a place like this? Doesn't want to open. What do we do? Aha! Sounds like a job for lads. Dinky door like this? All I need is a bit of a running start and... Interfacing with security seal. Entering override code. Clear. Entry lock has been released. Oh, oh. cool. Cheers. Might be a bit late to ask, but since we're about to meet this number 13, what kind of person is she? Number 13 was the foremost Pharon pilot in Colony Zero. In terms of pure battle prowess, she exceeds my own. If she attacks us before we can explain the situation, things might go badly for us. That will not be an issue. Number 13 will respond to me. You've got a lot of trust in her. Yes. I am sure she will understand. Cool, cool. Well then, what say we get this Tira reunion underway?
Objective confirmed ahead. <sighs> we have no hostile intentions. Please disengage optical camouflage. Receiving unrecognized ID. Feron unit. Number 13. So, it is her! 13! Number 7? Huh? Sagiri! Please, I need some time. Uh, okay. 13. Number seven? Oh, I don't believe it. It's really you. It's been so long, number seven. I thought I'd never ever see you again. Agreed, 13. I should have realized this sooner. If I had, this wouldn't have... No, don't worry a bit. Anyway, it wasn't all terrible for me. I mean, I almost died, and I was alone for ages. But it's all been worth it. I finally realized something. And what is that? All of us Theron pilots, from the moment we were born, we didn't actually have to follow any of the orders we were given. We only thought we did. Do you understand? But it wasn't true in the slightest. See for yourself. Nobody gives me any orders, but I'm still able to survive like this, right? In other words, you have learned how to issue orders to yourself. <laughs> what a weird way to put it. But yeah, maybe you could say that. From this point on, all of us can run free. Live life just how we want to. So come on, number seven. Let's you and me go on a rampage together. Spread mayhem to the entire world. Please? Huh? All the things and people that made us what we are now. Now it's our turn to do with them as we like. We can loot and steal. We can smash and burn. We can even murder. Right? Doesn't that just give you chills, number seven? You're with me, right, number seven? You've got to be. The... 13? What are you talking about? Um... Wait. What are you talking about? What's wrong? You've always understood me, number seven. That is... Oh, no. How very strange. I don't seem to understand you either. Before now, I always understood everything about you, number seven. Thirteen, I'm Sigiri now. Please, listen. Sigiri? What is a Sigiri? Number seven? You're number seven! Seriously, what's gotten into you? What about you? I see. Now it makes sense. Now I understand why the connection between us has up and disappeared. Thirteen. What do you mean? I and number seven have always been together. But, oh well, things change, right? I can see that your heart belongs over there now. <sighs> Sorry, Sagiri, but this, this is something I can't ignore. Senna, negative. She's coming, in the Pharaoh, now. <gasps> Understood. I am begging you. Please, come with me. Everyone is waiting for you. Thirteen, let us go home. Home? Where is that? Huh? Where can I go back to? Where am I supposed to go? Thirteen, you will always... Don't you get it, number seven? From the very start, there's never been a place for us in this world. That's why I wanted to make one. And to do that, everything else must first be torn down. We have to burn this world that Mobius loves so much, down to the ground, then take back all that they stole from us. 
Is that why you attacked and pillaged the colony units? Keep on doing that, and you only create more enemies. And for what? So I was right about you. You don't understand me after all, Number 7. <sighs> I am sorry, Thirteen. What for? I thought, of all people, you would surely understand my reasoning. But by doing that, I over-relied on the connection I thought we had, and neglected to pay attention to the real you. I failed to consider how deeply you must have felt about us, and now, I have lost you. Hmm. Listen, please, Thirteen. This world... It is not as cruel and heartless as you have thought. There are people, even outside of Colony Zero, who accepted me as Sagiri, as their own. And if that is true, there must be a place we can call home. Hmm. You really have changed. I don't think the old Number 7 would ever say something like that. Since I and the others have changed, it would follow that the world itself may also change. Or do you think that reasoning is false, Thirteen? <laughs> oh, you really are something else, Number 7. Who but you would think of others so much? On the day that you disappeared, Number 13, I made a decision. Even if my fate was to run down my clock to the last, I would defend every last person in Colony Zero. I see. Isn't it funny? I had the same idea and tried my hardest to achieve it. That is precisely why, if our roles were reversed, I would have chosen just as you have. <laughs> you may well have. I suppose we aren't so different after all. Yes. And we are connected. Now and forever. That's right. Well then. I feel relieved. Ah, oh, Thirteen, wait! A dead end. We had the entrance covered. There shouldn't have been any other way through. Sparks. You don't think she jumped off from here, do you? No. Thirteen is alive. You can tell? Number Thirteen and I have had a connection since the moment of birth. A connection? I would conjecture it to be a phenomenon akin to telepathy. My sense of it had been severed after she disappeared. But now, I can feel Number Thirteen's existence clearly once again. Could it be connected somehow to you and her being so similar? That is unclear. However, there may be some kind of causal connection between the two. Ah, oh, mystery upon mystery. It will be good to meet her again. I guess we'll have to make enough on a Giri for one more person next time. I would like that. And I conjecture number 13 would too. Well. We've come a long way in our quest to make some rice balls. <laughs> After all that effort, I bet Senna's onigiri will taste that much better. Mimi, I don't really need the extra pressure. You know what does need pressure? The myth rice. Let's grab what was stolen and skedaddle. Yeah. We should give the good news to Colonies 4 and Lambda while we're at it. Yes. Thank you for your efforts. Everyone is exceedingly grateful. 
It's a bit of a shock to me that the onigiri were a hit with the others, not just you. It's given me a kick in the butt. Maybe I should go ahead and learn to cook properly. Is that something you want to do, Senna? Uh, um... When you put it like that... I guess maybe that's a bit much. Is that so? Senna? Hmm? I would like to create a new colony. Hmm? A new colony? So, you mean different from Colony Zero? Yes. It would be a place where we would not have to hurt others and steal to live. Where, even if we go far away, we'll have a place to come back to. A colony we can all call home. That's what I want to make. I see. Sounds to me, you finally found your calling. If I had not met you, Ouroboros, I would have remained number seven would not have reconciled with Thirteen. I might even have had to harm her. My comrades and I can exist in this way because of what you and the others have done. Therefore... <clears throat> Thank you, Sana.
What is this place? And... Is that a cradle? I remember this room. Anything you want to tell us, Kamaravi? This is where I awoke. Met Miyabi and the others. So that means that cradle is... It is no simple cradle. Fitted inside is a device which matures a life to a state close to homecoming. That makes sense. So that's what Y used when reviving Mwamba and the others. Kamaravi, is that cradle still usable? The installation works, just barely. Why do you ask such a thing? Uh, Ethel, you're not thinking... Our enemies are supernatural beings. Monsters who use human lives for fodder. You can all fight against them, but me... As I am now, I'm barely able to protect myself. All I can really do is hang back and watch, so as not to be a hindrance. But... Suppose I was to use this cradle... Ethel, you don't have anything to prove. As far as the choices available to you go, you could also return to the city and live a peaceful life. And yet, you're saying you want to throw your body back under war's grindstone and spend your life fighting. But then, you were ever thus. By the time you speak your mind, your body and soul are long ready. I think you should do as you wish. Kamaravi, are you sure it's fine? To embroil her in what's ultimately our fight? Ethel's path should be hers to choose. I'm certain her resolve is firm. If she wished for a life of peace, she would not have followed us this far. The way must have been inside her all along. I suppose that's true, yes. But still, I am anxious about the result, same as you. Nevertheless, as a devoted follower of none other but the warrior's way myself, I wish to respect the will and resolve of one who has chosen the same path. I believe Ethel's freedom is hers to do with as she wishes. Thank you, Kamaravi. At the same time, I am of course not in a position to decide such things myself. We have conveyed to you our desire. Would you tell us your opinion in turn? <sighs> Well, what should we do? How are you feeling, Ethel? Oh, never better. I mean that literally. It's as though new strength is welling up inside of me. This way I'll be able to fight by your side too. You have my thanks. Huh. What's wrong, Kamaravi? Silvercoat. Oh. Silvercoat? What does that mean? 
I'm not sure. When I saw you just now, the word simply came to me. As though something was guiding me. What in the world? This sensation! From where did it spring? Kamaravi, I can explain. What we should be thinking about now is the future. What we can achieve in unison, no? Huh. I said I could be your eyes. That has not changed. Just as you showed me the way before, let me now be your guide. You are right. You can see that which I cannot, indeed. I wanted to live life true to myself, but the answer is still not clear. But perhaps, by working together with you, Let's search for the answer hand in hand, Kamaravi. With unity between us, nothing can be impossible.